Welcome to the city of brotherly love. Really, welcome to Philly. We're all from different places, different shades, different faces, a bell filled up with different nations, dependent on independence declaration. Yo, we made it. But we know glory and the grave, be it rights, soldiers, or jobs, a greater truths and reigning virtues that were spoken of God. Proclaim justice throughout the land to all the inhabitants. We were supposed to lavish it, but like all God's gifts, sins cause mismanagement. It's a fallen world and hurting city, a broken, frail system. Only those that have hope can give help to the stricken. This was the worst experience of my life, the worst. When they busted the doors, I was sound asleep. I didn't hear nothing. It was a white officer. He had a gun and put the gun on my forehead. Get up, get off the bed. I got up, there was about 12 of them in here. The worst part was that I, I get into a depression that's when my doctor prescribed me some nerve pills, and I've been taking those nerve pills since then. I moved to this house, I think it was September 12, 78 or 80. It has been 37 years that I'm here. Nobody bothers me. There is no noise when I go to sleep. When I go to my backyard and I water my plants, I see them grow. I pick up the little peppers, the peppers, the cilantro. My children visit me here and my grandchildren. So I feel comfortable, very comfortable here. I always told my children, this will be my last place. When they take me out of here, well, it will be to the cemetery. So this poem I wrote at the Aquinas Center. So the title is uh, Friendship. Friendship is like the leaves of the tree. They come and go, but they are always there to help you as the leaves of the tree help you collect water for it to stay strong. Friends help us collect hope so we could stay strong. I first met Francisco when he was an eighth grade student at the local parochial school here. I think his parents intentionally came to the U.S. so that their children would have greater opportunity. But I don't think once they landed here, like many families, they had a full sense of what it would take to get there. They were already sacrificing a lot, working six days a week and very long shifts. So Francisco does childcare for his sisters and also takes money to pay the bills and, and does a number of things during school to help his family. Is it good? We see a lot of students who don't realize until they become 17 or 18 that the pathways after high school are very limited for them. He was learning it a little bit younger than a lot of the immigrants that I work with. He wanted it to be different. My goals are like to be successful. I want to tell my parents, I want to show them that like everything they did, the hard work they did is like paying off, that it wasn't in vain what they did. His passion was really to apply for a very new competitive high school, a Catholic high school in Philadelphia called Cristo Rey. It's a unique program in that it's a very competitive college prep school, but also has a work study component. The students are four days in the classroom and one day out in a corporate setting. He had heard about this and felt like this might really fit his interests. The challenge being that he did not have working papers to be able to work here in the United States. For me to be able to go to Cristo Rey, I needed working papers. I got the letter stating that I need to be evicted from this apartment. 
because my son, they thought that he was living here with me, dealing drugs in this apartment, but he wasn't. Candy came in for a free one hour appointment at our legal clinic and she was very upset. What Candy explained to me is that when she and her landlord went to court, uh, the district attorney had approached them and basically threatened the landlord that if she didn't evict Candy, that he was going to take her house. And he told Candy that she was a bad influence on the neighborhood. And I just know that if I had been there for her at the time, they wouldn't have been treated that way. First of all, he wouldn't have spoken to them at all. He would have spoken to me, and I would have let him know that he didn't have a case of forfeiture here. But because they were unrepresented, uh, they basically were in a position where they were forced to capitulate. I told them that I would represent them. We filed an answer to the petition. I sent a letter to the district attorney laying out for him the cases that set forth uh, the fact that he really had no case against her uh, and asked him to withdraw the petition. He wasn't willing to at first, but eventually he agreed to withdraw the petition. Peter always told me, don't worry, Candy, I'm going to help you out. And he did, thank God. I find out by Peter. I think he told me in church. I was happy. I was very happy. I praised my Lord because I was trusting that Peter was going to help me out. And I'm very thankful with him and the whole staff there at the legal clinic. I think the really cool thing about this work is the relationships that are built between lawyers like me and clients like Candy. We've become friends over this. She's a great cook and she's always bringing me food. Uh, she's just so appreciative of the help that I was able to give her that she wants to help back. She gives uh, donations every month uh, to our work. The thing that like, made me decide to like go to Chris Ray and uh, like a public school was like the job that you work. You interact with people who are like 10, 20 year old, older than you, and they respect you. And like the work that I do is fun. At the same time, I learn new things. If I would have never met Miss Bethany, and, like without the help also of the clinic. Without them, I wouldn't be a Christian Ray. You take individuals who are already disconnected from their home country, they're separated from family, they are separated from language and traditions that they're comfortable with. The church and places like Aquinas Center are a first point of contact for people. The legal clinic being embedded in this center allows them to bridge the trust they already have with their faith community to things within the larger bureaucratic systems that they wouldn't be able to navigate or negotiate otherwise. The body of Christ has all types of people in it, and yet in our communities we tend to be segregated uh, by wealth or neighborhood or races and ages. We're bringing lawyers to the inner city where they wouldn't ordinarily go, and we're bringing clients to meet with lawyers who they would not otherwise meet. We're helping to bring Jesus to a client that may not hear him or see him in any other way. But when that client comes to one of our clinics, he's able to see the embodiment of Christ in our volunteer attorneys, in our clinic coordinators, in you know, the people who are there to greet or the people who are there to pray. Philadelphia is a big city and has 1.5 million people and 31% of them live in poverty. And so I would say none of them really have access to adequate legal services. And yet they all have legal issues that are gonna come up during their lifetime that basically go unaddressed. We're here to meet legal needs. We're also here to share the gospel with those who don't know Christ and to encourage and strengthen those who do know Christ to help give hope to all people who come into our doors. Our symbol is a paradox. 
a cherished cross. It tells that God has not left us to our own devices, that restoration is sacrificial and priceless, such as summed up in the act that Christ did. And now we, the new we, we are zealous for good works that point to the great deed. We've become a community of grace, servants in a true kingdom, captives brought to true freedom. And while in this broke city, as forgiven sinners, redeemed, shall the infinitely helped not also help others in need.